So I think here is the first design choice or engineering choice we have to make as a planet. What is the temperature that we want to live at? Right? And there'll be design compromises between some people who want it hotter, some people who want it colder. But this is, I think, the fundamental question for humanity, and it's a design question. How might you go about answering that question? So there's things called impact studies. These tell us what might happen to the planet as a result of climate, uh, climate change, and it's basically the litany of horrors. Right? So at a one and a half degree temperature increase, we'll lose 10% of species. At two degrees, we'll lose 90% of all coral reefs. At three degrees, we'll have one to four billion people with water shortages. That will mean war across the planet. Right? So you just basically go up here and get more and more frightened. So you say, okay, I might be prepared to tolerate you know, some loss of species, 100 million refugees, and a couple of border wars. That would be about two degrees. So seriously, this is how you would engineer backwards. So you say, I'm going to tolerate that, two degrees. If I hit, this is the, uh, these are basically where the best models of climate are today. If you hit 450 parts per million, worst case, 450 will give you three and a half degrees of warming, best case, one and a half. So to hit two and you aim at 450, you've only got about a 30% chance of success. So that's not a great picture, but that might be how you design the challenge. So let's assume that we thought two degrees was good enough and all the wars and horrors that are associated and the collapse of fisheries. And then we say, okay, that means we need to hit 450 parts per million. What do you have to do? You basically have to take all of the, the carbon-based energy we produce today and take it from one of these sources, either solar energy, wind energy, um, hydroelectric, or even photosynthesis, and make the 16 terawatts of humanity's power consumption. The interesting th thing here to note is that if you tap the energy in every wave that hits every coastline on the planet, you only get one-fifth of humanity's power supply. If you tap the energy of all the, in all the tides on the planet, you only get a fifth of humanity's power supply, right? That's how much power we use, it's really scary, and it really means it has to come from solar, wind, geothermal, and maybe a little from photosynthesis. So, let's take a wild stab, this is how we're going to do it, and we've got basically about 25 years, we're going to, oh, in 25 years we're going to make three terawatts of nuclear, two of geothermal, two of wind, two of solar, two of uh, uh, solar thermal, and two of photovoltaics. For shits and giggles, we'll have half a terawatt of biofuels to entertain that community. Um, you, might, you might get my biases, uh, read my biases in that. Um, so this is what you have to do. This is the engineering task. So this is my job. We'll get to your job just after this. So every second for the next 25 years, we have to install 100 square meters of solar cells somewhere on the planet. So that means probably every four seconds we cover this theater with solar cells. Every four seconds for the next 25 years. That gives you two terawatts. 50 square meters of mirrors installed, um, so this auditorium covered in mirrors every 10 seconds for 25 years in a row. Um, one uh, three megawatt wind turbine, that's a wind turbine as big as this entire building, has to be erected every five minutes for the next 25 years. One three gigawatt nuclear power plant has to be installed somewhere on the planet every week for the next 25 years.